Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this show, COVID-19 Facts versus Hype. Uh, first, let me welcome all of you uh, this Sunday evening and uh, explain to you some of the things that we are going to be discussing on this show. Uh, as we and the world grapple with COVID-19, uh, we are all struck by the amount of misinformation, uh, lack of awareness, and lack of understanding of this disease. जैसे भारत में और सारे विश्व में इस वक्त हम कोरोना वायरस से जूझ रहे हैं हमें ये आभास हो रहा है कि इसकी बहुत सी चीज़ें हैं जिनके बारे में हम नहीं जानते हैं वी डोंट अंडरस्टैंड इट एंड उसके लिए ये इस इसको ठीक से समझना इससे कैसे लड़ा जा सकता है हम अपने आप को किस तरह इससे प्रोटेक्ट कर सकते हैं ये सब समझना बहुत ज़रूरी है Uh, so welcome to this uh, uh, live show uh, this is uh, in partnership with scroll and we are extremely grateful to scroll for hosting this first of all uh, let me welcome my guest for today evening uh, dr gornali datta dr gornali datta is a very well known pulmonologist and is at medanta medicity she has also been uh, one of the strongest voices uh, creating awareness uh, around uh, Uh, covid-19 tuberculosis and many other infectious diseases so welcome bornali thank you so much uh, for taking out time this sunday evening to be with us thanks thank you chapal thanks for having me so uh baat ji to rahi hai we are all talking about how the lockdown is going to be lifted lockdown khatam ho jayega wapas economic activity shuru ho jayegi uh 30% economic activity or uh, jobs uh may already baat chit chal rahi hai ki hum unhe wapas uh, bula rahe hain logo ko is waqt uh, corona virus ke bare mein bahut se myths aur bahut se facts hain jinke bare mein aam janta nahi jaanti so uh banali let me ask uh, by uh, uh start by asking you the most fundamental question uh the world is looking uh, and we in india are all frightened in fact paranoid ghabraye hue hain ki kya hoga covid 19 ko leke bahar jana chahiye nahi jana chahiye aur dusra ki hum kis tarah apne aap ko isse protect kare kyunki ye bahut zaruri hai ki jaise jaise hum aam zindagi mein wapas jaane ki koshish karte hain as we go back to normal life how do we protect ourselves how do we save ourselves and protect ourselves from covid-19 uh right chapal so uh, as you pointed out there is a lot of information and a lot of misinformation uh and all of us are uh, subject to you know a lot of social media things uh and fear and paranoia is huge it's tremendous i mean we have to first of all accept that covid-19 is here to stay for some more months and we just have to deal with it now uh what are the protective steps we take depends on one simple understanding of how the virus spreads i think ye hum sabko pata hai ki virus ka spread jo hota hai wo uh, khansi se uh, sneezing se jo droplets aata hai initial hamara jo understanding tha ye tha ki jab hum sneeze karte ya khanste hain droplets ja ke surface pe girta hai table pe deewar pe कहीं पे भी और वो जब कोई टच करे और फिर मुंह में हाथ लगाए वायरस फिर नाक या मुंह से रेस्पिरेटरी ट्रैक्ट यानी लंग्स में चला जाता था ना एक और चीज है कि ये ड्रॉपलेट इन्फेक्शन इसको कहते हैं सेकंड तरीका है जो बाद में जाके हमें पता चला दैट इट आल्सो स्प्रेड्स थ्रू एरोजोल्स यानी बहुत फाइन पार्टिकल्स होते हैं जो हवा में सस्पेंडेड रहता है फॉर आवर्स थ्री आवर्स फाइव आवर्स स्पेशली जब वो बंद कमरे में के अंदर होता है बाहर उतना ज्यादा असर नहीं पड़ता क्योंकि एटमोस्फियर में वो डायल्यूट हो जाता है बट विद इन क्लोज स्पेस द एरोजोल कैन स्टे फॉर मेनी आवर्स सो वंस यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दीज आर द टू मैकेजम तो आप अपने आप को कैसे प्रोटेक्ट करेंगे अभी हम सब बाहर जाने लगेंगे इट्स इन एविटेबल लॉकडाउन खत्म होगा वी विल रिज्यूम नॉर्मल लाइफ टू सम एक्सटेंट so the very first thing is mask and that is mandatory now masks are a must now mask again hame pata hai bahut tarike ke masks hote hain aajkal jo sabse common uh, mask that people are using are the cloth mask you know simple cloth mask jo ghar pe bana hua hai now what does a cloth mask do is very simple just a barrier across your face right it is important ki naak aur muh usse dhake uh, that is important when you wear a cloth mask 
when you even wear a surgical mask, you are not protecting yourself. You're protecting others from you. So if you were to cough or sneeze, wo aapke mask ke andar hi, droplets ho, aerosols ho, sab uske andar hi rahega. You won't spread it in the atmosphere. Yaha waha nahi girega. So that is the purpose of the mask. Now, if you imagine, bahar so log hai, or sab mask pehne hai. That means that person is protecting everybody else from himself. Aap apne khud ke jo secretions hai, khasne pe, usse aap auro ko protect kar rahe. That is a cloth mask or a surgical mask. Very important. So we are looking after each other. Hum sab ki parwa kar rahe ki mein khasunga to isko ho sakta hai problem. So I'll wear a mask and I'll protect the other person from me. Similarly, the other person will do it. Now the second thing is N95 mask. Aajkal to N95 mask bhi bohat widely usage mein hai. But the N95 mask of course protects you from aerosol infection. Bahar jitna bhi infection hai. N95 mask however is recommended just for healthcare workers. That is the key thing hai. N95 masks are to be used by healthcare workers who are dealing with COVID patients, either suspects or confirmed. So N95 masks are meant to be reserved for that. Okay, so first comes masks. Second is hand hygiene. So hand hygiene, again, we all know it is a vital thing. Why? Because we touch it. We have a doorknob, lift ka button, table top. We have a hand on our hand. And then when we look at our hand, virus will transmit in the So hand hygiene. You have to keep, if you touch anything, you have to wash your hands thoroughly with soap for 20 seconds or use alcohol-based sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. And again, do the, go through the all the steps, 20 seconds. So hand hygiene. Third is, we all know now, social distancing or physical distancing. When we eat droplets, up to two meters, they can drop. So you must keep a distance of two meters from people around you. Just, just keep distance from everyone. Lift me aajkal, pehle ho tha tha, lift matlab, jitne log ho sakte, thus ke andar aajai. That is no longer the case. Har ek lift me, ek sticker laga hoga, ki maximum char ya paach log hi andar ja sakte, aur sab apne ta, each other se ghoom ke rahi hai. Matlab, don't face each other. So that aap khaasenge to particles, ek dousre pe nahi jayega. So these are basic three things your government shuru se recommend karte aaye hai. They are well proven. Or abhi ek bar lockdown khatam ho jayega. We do the same precautions. But additionally, I think all of us have to avoid going anywhere that it is not necessary to go. Kahi hume zarurat nahi hai to na jaye. Ghar pe rahi hai, whatever it is. Avoid contact, minimize contact. Aapko pata hai koi bimar hai to stay away from the person. So these are basic things. But the... Uh, principles don't change whether it is in lockdown or outside of lockdown precautions hame fir, same precautions hi follow karna. so this is really useful about the uh, uh, useful jankari hai. let me ask you a slightly different question one of the myths around covid 19 is that most people who will get covid 19 will not actually turn sick that's actually a very small percentage that will uh, Get sick. So, बहुत से लोग ये मानते हैं कि बाहर जाने में कोई खराबी नहीं है अगर COVID-19 आपको होता भी है, अगर आपको ये वायरस होता भी है, तो इसमें घबराएं नहीं। इसमें ज़्यादातर लोग को कुछ नहीं होगा। इसमें इसमें कितना सच है? क्योंकि ये ये बात rash behavior भी promote कर सकती है। और इसके बारे में इस मित ये मित है या fact है? ये बताइए Sure. Uh, so that's a very relevant point. Or just say, you told me, it's got an advantage too. That people don't panic, na kare, you know, paranoia, na na ho, because ultimately it is a mild flu-like illness. But equally, that doesn't mean that you take precautions. That it's a simple flu. Mujhe kya karna hai? I'm going to go out. I'm going to party. I'm going to do everything. That's not a good attitude either. Now. Uh, the studies jo ab tak hote aaye hain initially as we know it was in china then it was in italy then it was in new york city these are the hubs i'm talking about the hot spots and of course it has happened all over the world but these are the hot spots jahan se kafi data aaya hai now the very initial wuhan ka uh, there's a study published in new england journal which is a very bahut uh, key ek medical journal hai so there was a group of 1099 covid confirmed uh, cases who were uh, looked at in the hospital. And 
the reality is 81% had mild illness, mild to moderate. Now, these are the group which they can recover at home. They, may, they won't need hospital admission. Unko thora fever hai, khasi, zukam, is type ke symptoms. 81%. So that is correct that 81% have mild illness. 15% um, require hospital admission. 5% require ICU admission. Is 5% 5% ICU admission, 2.3% will require ventilator. And of this entire cohort, 1.4% will die. So it is a fact that the majority of us, the majority of us will only have a mild flu-like viral illness. But there will be many who will also fall sick, who will need hospitalization, ventilation, ICU care, etc. The problem is that our population is enormous, 1.3 billion population, 130 crore population. So if we were all to fall sick at the same time, we don't have healthcare facilities. Our healthcare facilities are limited. When COVID is not limited, it is very limited. Now, in the face of a pandemic, we will get significantly compromised. So the point is that the point of the lockdown, the point of taking all the precautions, is that the disease is staggered. So two types of peaks. One is when we don't lock down, we don't take any precautions, then the peak is like that. Or, and, and our healthcare services are compromised. If we do lock down, we take the precautions and the curve goes like that. That is what we call by flattening the curve. And when we do that, what happens is that the healthcare services are not overwhelmed. So I think it's a balance. Yes, it is a mild illness for the majority of the people. So do not panic. Do not panic, follow the precautions, do everything. On the other hand, being reckless makes no sense. Because yes, young people get a mild illness, but not everyone. There will be a few young people who will also get a severe illness and some will also lose their lives, unfortunately. So you don't want to be that person just because you've been, you know, rash or reckless and you've decided, I'm not wearing a mask. I don't mask. I'll go ja mingle. I'll go to the marketplace. I'll do everything. That's also not okay. So I think it's important to understand this and maintain the balance. Uh, thanks. Thanks. This is really helpful. You're very necessary. Uh, before I go to the next question, I want to say, Anybody who is has a question, you can tweet to us, you can comment, you can send your questions to us live. We are taking live questions. We've been receiving some live questions. Uh, so, I want to ask you a question that a lot of young people have been are under this mistaken impression that young people will not suffer under COVID-19. Uh, young people, ko, and you know, India is primarily demographically young. It's what Hindustan ki population uh, largest amount to have under 35. Uh, so is this a myth or a fact? So again, uh, there is truth in it, no doubt. And I'll just quote because uh, now the studies and the uh, shared experience hai, pura, you know, the whole world, uh, unka experience hai from Italy, from England, from US, we are getting all that experience to us. Uh, we are getting the information ki ha itne log uh, affected hue itne deaths hue. Now I'll quote one particular figure from New York City. So New York City mein uh, 6,800 a group of deaths of 6,800 people. Now in May 73% is more than 65 years old. 23% is 45 to 64. And 18 to 44 is 4.5%. And less than 17 years is 0.04%. Uh, so yes, we are aware that uh, children uh, are, do not get a severe form of disease. The most of them will just get a very simple uh, viral infection and get better. But not all. There will be a few who may get severe illness, even in children. We have seen in New York City, they have recently quoted three deaths, where the virus behaves like a vasculitis. Vasculitis means that when you have a so the heart attack ka chance ye sab hota hai. Ye mein dekha gaya hai. So it is nobody is free of risk. Ha, young people, the 18 to 45, young adult, unme kam hai, 4.5%. But that's not zero. You know, you can still get it. So uh, yes, it is true that above the higher your age, 
the more risk of severe disease, the more risk of death. And in the younger age groups, it is lesser, but it is not zero still. So I think one has to be mindful. So even for the young adult who gets a disease and becomes very unwell, his risk is still 100% as an individual. So I think ye hame nahi bhoolna chahiye. And therefore, precautions hame fir bhi lena hai. With our full understanding of this uh, illness. So I think this is again very useful. Ye bahut important baat hai ki nobody is immune to it. Aap young hai, aapke chances kam hai, magar iska ye matlab nahi hai ki aap immune hai. Aur iska ye matlab kate hi nahi hai ki aap suffer nahi karenge. We, had, we we'll now uh, take our first live question which has come. Uh, uh, it comes from Ranveer Varma. I cannot see where he is from, but he's saying, uh, what will be the future while living with the virus when asymptomatic cases are increasing in the country? What he's saying is that when there are asymptomatic cases, hey, see, that's the question. Sorry. And, and that, sorry. Shall I? Uh -huh, please, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, thanks for the question, Ranveer. Very relevant question. And I think that is what all of us are wondering. What will the next three, six months be like? We have the virus. It is very much within our communities, within our society now. And uh, it is going to be a staggered evolution. We avoided the peak, which would have overwhelmed us completely. But now it will slowly infiltrate everywhere. And there is no option there. Why? Because the entire population is a susceptible population, which means we have not been exposed to the virus. That's what a novel virus does. It's a new virus. We have zero immunity. When a person gets it, yes, a young, healthy person will subsequently then develop immunity to it. But when you first get it, you have no existing immunity against it. Yes, the root will be that there will be many asymptomatic carriers. There will be many symptomatic people. There'll be many hospitalizations. There will be deaths. There will be generation of herd immunity through the fact that asymptomatic carriage can often also result in herd immunity. Fecal, fecal transmission can result in herd immunity. These are the ways that eventually a population will become fully immune to the virus. And the other way, of course, is by getting a vaccine. So this is the harder way because obviously for so many asymptomatic well people, there will be so many unwell, so many deaths. But that is something that, that we can't avoid at all. Uh, I, yeah, and I totally agree with you because I think this this is the interesting part that the, the certainty that we are looking for uh, is not really available in the way that we think about the future. Uh, we'll take our next question, uh, which is from uh, from Devishri Lokande. She's saying uh, from Pune. She's saying when there's talks of herd immunity for society, where do TB patients or people with one lung stand, do we stay I home and isolated until a vaccine comes? I mean, this is a really critical question. It's a very important question. In India, there are millions of TB patients in India. There are millions of TB patients. Lacks and lacks of TB patients every year. And also, we, uh, a recent modeling study that has been shown a spike in TB cases and deaths. Mein. So, herd immunity and TB patients, how do we correlate this? Is it guess about So I think a very valid question and also a very difficult one to answer uh, with a very you know definitive answer. Any, as we have seen, anyone with underlying lung disease, anyone with underlying lung disease is at higher risk, is at greater risk for developing a more severe infection. Yes, all of us will get infected. Not everyone will get severe infection. Severe infection is when you have an underlying disease. It can be lung disease, chronic lung disease. It can be, yes, one destroyed lung because of old TB, old infection. It can be because of asthma, COPD. Also, all other diseases like diabetes, hypertension, chronic kidney disease, liver disease. So everybody has the same question that we are high risk. We know we are high risk. What do we do about it? Do we just sit tight till the vaccine comes, which may be another six? You know, the, the optimistic thing is September, but it may not be so realistically. So the, the important thing is for you to be aware that, yes, you are at higher risk. So what, how will you then tackle the problem? Again, you take all the precautions, all the standard precautions. But the very key thing is that where, the, where does the virus spread? Where does the virus like to be? Wherever there are crowds. We heard the recent explosion in the Sabzi Mandis. Why? Because there are thousands of people who congregate there. And you need one positive to just spread it. 
to like in Tamil Nadu, there were 300 positive in one day. So, you know, so, so that's what the virus likes to be. And that's what you have to avoid. So do not go to any place that you can possibly avoid going. Do not go to a crowded place at all. Now, soon the marketplaces and etc. may open up. The government has taken a very conscious stand for this reason. Do not open the malls, the cinema, the marketplaces, uh, public transport, because these are where crowds congregate where there will be a lot of people and it'll take very little to spark off infection in everybody who's present at that point in time. So I think it's vital to avoid that. At the same time, taking basic precautions, your life doesn't have to come to a complete standstill. Be safe about it. Go to places where you're aware, go to a friend's place or a family member's place, assuming that they are well, they don't have any problem. So limit your exposure as much as possible. Yes, do your work from home. You know, unfortunately, we are in a situation where there is no easy way out. So don't take any risk. But I think the key thing is that this is where the virus likes to be in the in crowded places. So I think that is vital to other. So I think it's a very important uh, uh, tagline to consider where does the virus like to be? And that is going to define not just our work lives, but also our social lives going in the future. Virus kaha jata hai ye suchi hai aur wahi wahi jaga hai jaha ko nahi jana hai. Kyunki isse badiya koi aur ehtiyat nahi hai. Jab tak koi vaccine nahi aati ya koi kyo nahi aata. We'll take our next question. Ye pooch rahe hai Himachal Pradesh se Kartik. Ye bohat there is no clear answer. What happens when a person recovers from COVID-19? Will he or she have immunity then? Uh, Karthik, thank you for asking this important question. Kya un logon ko immunity ho jati hai? Kya unko phir se ho sakta hai? Iske baare mein kya? Ye, ye ek baut bada myth hai log jo propagate bhi karte hai ki aapko COVID-19 ho gaya, ab nahi ho gaya. Ghabra hi mat. You're free from it. Is that true? question, Karthik. And... So uh, any viral infection, any infection for that matter, you know that the body develops immunoglobulins, antibodies, right, to fight that virus. Now, the first peak of antibodies is an, something called IgM, which is acute. There's a sharp rise and then it settles down. And IgG is the antibody that confers long term immunity. That is the one that comes a bit later, but then that, that will stay for months. Uh, months, sometimes years, and that will give you the, that's the long term memory of the brain so that if the virus comes again, then it can. Now, the problem with COVID is that it's a very different virus and we are still struggling. So we had thought, yes, if someone gets COVID, he is immune. But as you all know, recently, WHO said that there were many workplaces who were going to give a immunity passport. Ki ha, you had COVID, you are immune, you can come back to work. Because we assume you will not be at risk of developing it again. But the WHO says that that is not yet so clear cut. You may still get it. So I think one just has to be cautious. While we are, we are still learning, you must be aware that every day there's a new piece of information. There's a new, one day we say, yes, it is A, next day, no, it is not A, it's B. So we are also still learning the actual facts of the virus. It is extremely complex uh, uh, medical illness. You know, it's not a simple uh, thing that we all thought in the beginning or that we all hoped for in the beginning. So it is much more complex than that. One thing to bear in mind is there was a news report from Korea, South Korea who did a very good job of controlling the virus. But they said that sometime later when they retested, uh, uh, I think around 90 uh, people who had recovered, had got negative, and then they tested positive again. And that was a... Very scary thing for everyone, because the question is, what does that mean? Does that mean that we have got reinfected again? Because then what's the point of having antibodies or anything at all? Our immune system is just failing against this virus. But then later, they corroborated the, uh, this uh, sort of study with the fact that, no, they did not detect live virus. They just detected viral fragment. So viral fragment means a small piece of the virus, which is not viable. So it is just like a dead bacteria. You detect it because your tests are so, uh, you know, so sophisticated. You end up detecting even a death. So I think so. The reality is that yes, we will get immunity. How long will that immunity stay for? I think we may have to, uh, you know, hand fire and uh, wait as this part evolves in front of our eyes. And hopefully, this will be the same that we do for the ones who got infected. 
तो थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर दत्ता ये इस बारे में बताने के लिए कि आई थिंक इम्पोर्टेंट थिंग टू रिमेम्बर here is before we take the next question is that the term that has been used for this virus is novel so novel corona virus novel anoka we don't know enough we are still researching it so let's not try to look for so many confirmations but actually stick to a lot of the uh, the advice that medical professionals and the who gives us um ye dusra sawal hai wo keh rahe hain ki koi confirm medication प्रिस्क्राइब है ये जेरी मैथ्यूज हैं आई एम नॉट श्योर कहाँ से हैं बट ही आस्किंग सो आर देर एनी कन्फर्म मेडिकेशन प्रिस्क्राइब फॉर दिस दिस इज अगेन यू नो देर वॉज देर वॉज टॉक ऑफ एच आई वी मेडिकेशन देर वॉज टॉक ऑफ अदर मेडिकेशन दैट वोइंग टू शो प्रॉमिस इन रिजल्ट प्रेजिडेंट ट्रम्प अनाउंस समथिंग बट वट डज द मेडिकल फर्टर्निटी से आप डॉक्टर्स क्या मानते हैं और साइंटिफिक Okay, again, a very good question, and uh, and the one you know, the person who's asked the question probably knows that there is no answer again. So, uh, the what has been tried so far, as uh, as Chappal Ji just said, one is a HIV medicine, lopana lopanavir and ritonavir. So, this is a fixed drug combination. So, that has been tried. uh no no definitive evidence of success now what do we say when we say success there are two things we are looking at one is reducing virus shedding so you know when you cough or when your swab is taken your throat is full of virus i mean that's what we are trying to detect right so if that goes negative that means you are not infectious and that is what the drug is trying to do make you non infectious by reducing the virus in your throat so uh so virus shedding reduce uh, reducing that that is one goal of treatment second is reducing the severity of illness reducing deaths mortality uh so far no positive results which is very uh, unfortunate but the potential ones one is one was the anti hiv medicine one is hydroxychloroquine that we all know about hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine so there are ways in which these can affect uh, but again no conclusive evidence uh the the most hopeful one we have is something called remdesivir which was a viral antiviral medication which was developed for ebola virus and uh, while it wasn't used for that but it was there already and it has shown uh, promising results in animal studies and now it is being used as a phase 2 trial um apart from these then there are things like uh, we have uh, i don't know how much you all are aware jab koi bimar hota hai with covid there is a शरीर का जो इम्यूनिटी होता है इट्स अ सिवियर रिएक्शन इट्स कॉल्ड अ साइटोकाइन स्टॉर्म मतलब शरीर में बहुत सारे मॉलिक्यूल्स वायरस को लड़ने के लिए तैयार होते हैं for as a result of that the person becomes even more unwell so there are certain medicines to stop the cytokine storm one of them is called tocilizumab it it blocks this and then uh, convalescent sera convalescent sera means uh, jisko already ho chuka hai covid uske sharir mein jo blood mein jo एंटीबॉडीज है उसको निकाल के वी कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड एंड देन गिव इट टू अ क्रिटिकली सिक पेशेंट जिसके पास अपना एंटीबॉडीज हुआ नहीं है सो दीज आर दिंग्स विच हैव बीन विच आई हैव बीन ट्राइड विद सम डिग्रीज ऑफ सक्सेस नो कन्फर्म्ड नो कन्फर्म्ड एविडेंस येट देर इज अ बिग ट्रायल वर्ल्ड वाइड ट्रायल दैट डब्ल्यू एच ओ इज कंडक्टिंग कॉल द सॉलिडेरिटी ट्रायल जिसमें दे आर ट्राइंग द एंटी एच आई वी मेडिसिन दे आर ट्राइंग हाइड्रोक्सी क्लोरोक्विन क्लोरोक्विन दे आर ट्राइंग दल्सो ट्राइंग एंटी साइकोकाइन मेडिकेशन फॉर दिस एंड वी आर वेटिंग टू सी वॉट द रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस एंड रेमडेसिविर ऑफ कोर्स एंड वी आर वेटिंग टू सी वॉट द रिजल्ट ऑफ दिस कम्स आउट सो वी होप दैट अगेन विद इन द नेक्स्ट फ्यू वीक्स थिंग्स विल बिकम क्लियर टू अस for the moment even though there is not that much evidence our line of treatment has been as recommended by icmr hydroxychloroquine with azithromycin we are giving that a uh, few things to point out chapel if i may uh, yeah. not not uh, with regard to antiviral medication but other medication which is quite important during this viral infection because one of the things is that uh, covid mein dekha gaya hai ki khun thick ho jata hai 
खून ठीक हो जाता है लंग्स में क्लॉट्स बनने लगते हैं सो एंटीक्वागुलेशन खून पतला दवाई भी जरूरी होता है नॉट एज एंटीवायरल बट एज अ रिएक्शन ऑफ द वायरल इन्फेक्शन एंड सेकेंड इज एंटीबायोटिक्स ब्रॉड स्पेक्ट्रम एंटीबायोटिक्स आर नेसेसरी बिकॉज जो पेशेंट को वायरल इन्फेक्शन होता है वो फिर सेकेंडरी बैक्टीरियल इन्फेक्शन की वजह से सेप्टीसीमिया में भी जा सकते हैं सो दीज आर जस्ट एड ऑन थिंग्स टू द एंटीवायरल मेडिकेशन no th- this is all very helpful again thank you so much uh, uh, because i think uh, it's important to understand this also that there are various things being tried out and the solid act uh, solidarity trial that you mentioned uh, is particularly critical because it's happening globally pure wish mein ho raha hai wo trial and we are hopeful ki usme se kuch aise results aayenge jo hame is uh, is virus se learning ki kuch shamta kuch direction denge uh uh i'll take our next uh, question uh, uh it's about um, now again this is a, a purely uh, a question about keeping safe uh baba rohit k puch rahe hain uh how do we sanitize our clothes uh, as we travel from different places to work place how to stay safe with clothes hygiene you know uh, this is very very critical because now we all have to go out because economic activity is being resumed uh and uh, you know people have to be out the virus is in the air uh, we have no control over people's coughing to jab hum bahar jaye to wapas aate hain to hum usko leke aayenge agar kya isme kya hum kar sakte hain kya iski zarurat bhi hai aur agar zarurat hai to kaise kare again uh, very relevant question aur हम जो हॉस्पिटल जाते हैं सो वी आर स्पेशली पैरानॉइड अबाउट दिस बिकॉज यू नो हम जो घर के कपड़े पहन के जाते हैं एंड ऑल डॉक्टर्स ऑल नर्सेज हेल्थ केयर वर्कर्स दे आर जस्ट वारिड कि जब घर आएंगे तो हमारे जो घर वाले हैं वी आर पुटिंग दम एट रिस्क सो यू नो दैट इज अर इज अ वेरी वैलिड क्वेश्चन बिकॉज सबको ये लग रहा है कि हम यहाँ वहाँ घूमेंगे वायरस इज एवरीवेयर एंड हाउ टू बी प्रोटेक्ट us and our uh, families at home so what we do in the hospital uh, when we come back home is that uh, the recommendation is uh, so you can soak your clothes in detol for half an hour so you know you soak it in a tub of water soak it completely and put a uh, a good amount of liquid detol so a cap full of liquid detol approximately in it. soak it for half an hour and then just normal washing either you wash it like you wash it under the tap with surf or you do it in a washing machine whatever it may be if you have uh, if you're able to use a washing machine that is preferred to hand washing why so because washing machine when it turns the clothes apparently it's not heat generate hota hai ki the virus gets uh, killed so that is probably the best way to uh, handle your clothes uh, shoes as well best to leave your work shoes at the door don't bring them into the house and change into uh, this thing the minute you enter immediately wash your clothes best thing for all of us now i think the minute you come get rid of your shoes go to your bathroom soak your clothes shower cleanse yourself completely with a good thorough uh, soap scrub and i think you're uh, you're good hair is a problem hair also you know virus does uh, stay in the hair and uh, again in the hospital we wear a cap but that's obviously not possible bahar ghumne pe you can't wear a cap but that's important to keep it clean and keep it sort of you matlab you can't wash it all the time but just be aware that hair may be hota hai but the key thing is your hands now virus jab aerosol ban ke hawa mein hota hai that won't stick to your clothes that mm. you can only breathe it in but jo droplets hota hai koi aapke aas paas kisi ne khasa तो उसका ड्रॉपलेट्स कैन लैंड ऑन योर क्लोथ्स सो आई थिंक इट्स अ वेरी गुड पॉइंट एंड आई थिंक ऑल ऑफ अस हैव टू जस्ट चेंज आवर यू नो लाइफस्टाइल एंड जस्ट बिकम वेरी कॉन्शियस ऑफ हाइजीन सिंपल थिंग्स नथिंग वेरी ड्रास्टिक इज नीडेड बट आई थिंक वी जस्ट हैव टू डू दैट टू फील सेफ ये इंटरेस्टिंग बात भी है दिस इज आल्सो क्वाइट इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज़ इन 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 अ वर्ल्ड नाउ वी आर फाइंडिंग दैट हाइजीन हैज बिकम द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग to avoid a dangerous epidemic uh, and to control a dangerous epidemic not new medicines not new tests and certainly not new drugs the very fundamentals of hygiene that we were taught in school that you know doctors have been saying to us for decades ki bhai haath dho khane se pehle khane ke baad you know things like that uh, i'll take our next question um, this is uh, actually again a generally myth busting uh, which is very important and this has become critical for india also but elsewhere there was the theory about animals being responsible for covid-19 in people but let me expand this question also because a lot of people have this fear ki uh, 
street dogs uh, our pets can also spread covid so first part of the question is kya covid 19 animals se aata hai are they responsible for it uh, in people and number two is uh, the so more important thing is how do we deal with animals around us during this crisis yeah very very again pertinent question now ha covid 19 jo uh, sars cov2 jo virus hai which is causing covid 19 so this virus has come to human beings from animals in the wuhan wet market we know about that right the china ka jo ye wet market hai there you have a combination of domestic animals wild animals and living animals dead animals so it's a it's a mix of this and that is a perfect place for this kind of a novel virus to take birth so wahan pe it has started from that the original source is the bat and there is always an intermediary animal which is possibly a pangolin which is a scaly ant eater and then it has come to human beings so the very original virus yes sars cov2 came to humans from animals isko kehte hain zoonosis there is a group of diseases jo animals se human mein jab aata hai it's called zoonosis and uh, this event when it happens is called a spillover event par ek bar humans mein aa jata hai now it is purely human to human transmission now the animals are out of the loop however having said that because see it is not a simple thing animal to human transmission human to animal transmission is a very big event it's not something that happens you know every day of our lives it happens once in you know uh, 20 30 years ek bar aise uh, virus ko mauka milta hai to undergo this mutation and uh, become toxic to humans virulent to humans in any case so this is called a zoonosis abhi to humans mein hai and animals are out of the loop really bats are reservoirs for lots of viruses so bats ka jo caves mein and all these you know their uh, strange habits they are mammals but they have different habits to most mammals and that somehow makes them a reservoir for viruses so so that is one thing now in this particular virus we have two three accounts one is that in new york zoos they found that uh, wahan ke zoos ke jo tigers hai usme ye positive uh, sars cov2 ke liye positive aaya hai and quite a few tigers of the bronx zoo was found to be positive and they were thought to be infected by a human asymptomatic carrier theek hai so this has happened it's not widespread further data has shown us that yes cats may be susceptible dogs are not so we are talking ulta now the dogs the street dog is not giving it to you the question is are you giving it to it any animal because the animals mein nahi hai ye sirf humans mein hai we are the current you know bearers of this virus and for to transmit it to an animal one can't do it in a very simple manner so i wouldn't worry about that aspect so dogs cats they can be jisko fomites kehte hain yani aap infected ho covid se and you have a dog and you cough to uske jo droplets aapke dog ke upar girega the dog will go to another person who is not infected he will touch the dog so that is called a fomite and in a, I mean, an object that can carry the virus other than that i wouldn't worry about animals being in any way involved in this at the current stage so i think the subtext here is that we are uh, the, the virus is actually predominantly in us now so we have to be kinder to animals around us the chances of animals giving it to us are lesser than uh, uh, are way lesser than us giving it to animals and to other humans so i think this is very critical because there have been reports of uh, neglect abandonment logon ne apne pets ko chhod diya kitni ko dar lagta hai uh, ek uh, naya question aaya hai and this is a myth which is very very important uh, uh, and i really really would like you to comment on this because you're a pulmonologist there have been some uh, this is by tanveer jaskaran and uh, ye bahut hi acha sawal pucha inhone that's very relevant question there have been reports Uh, that smokers or nicotine users are at lower risk than the rest what is the truth because i mean this is something that we this is a myth but people are vastly believing it log mante hain ki cigarette pina ab inko corona virus se bachayega aapko kya kehna hai iske bare mein 
so that is uh, like that myth needs to be completely busted you know so smoke there is probably no disease that smoking can help in any way if you think about it you know aap jab cigarette peete hain whether you are doing real cigarette e cigarettes fortunately have been banned now but pehle e cigarettes mein nicotine high content nicotine hota tha along with lots of other toxic things and regular cigarette mein hame pata hai kitna aise padarth hai jo carcinogenic hai cancer causing hai they cause heart disease copd asthma tb everything every disease is aggravated by smoking so i would if there have been you know reports like this often we get to see ki ha smokers group mein but what you have to remember is that uh confounding factors ka ek cheez hota hai so you have two groups of people smokers and non smokers and you find oh so covid is more in the non smokers and less in the smokers but have you looked at all other factors have you looked at their age have you looked at underlying comorbidity etc so i wouldn't at all go with this that yes smoking will definitely not help your immunity or help your lungs because ultimately you're breathing it into your lungs and you want to have strong lungs and if you smoke there is no way your lungs will have either the immunity or the strength to deal with the virus so completely don't entertain the thought that smoking will in any way help you deal with the virus if there have been reports that you know in smokers it has been a bit lesser incidence then i would say we need uh, you know bigger studies bigger groups analysis properly to understand why this is so but for you know for, for not a minute should you consider that smoking can be helpful for uh, dealing with covid it cannot uh, this is also very useful because please do not start smoking if you have given up and do not increase uh, your cigarette intake just because uh, uh, some reports indicate that uh, uh, smoking remains injurious or health buri hai next sawal jo hai wo ek actually fact based sawal hai um, क्योंकि ये वर्ड बहुत बारी बोला गया है एंड आम आदमी को समझ में नहीं आता एंड कुछ वर्ल्ड लीडर्स ने भी इसको यूज किया है वर्ल्ड लीडर्स हैव यूज्ड इट वेरी ऑफन टू एज अ एज अ वे टू फाइट दिस क्राइसिस व्हाट इज हर्ड इम्यूनिटी प्लीज एक्सप्लेन इट टू अस व्हाट इज हर्ड इज दिस फ्रॉम डीप 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 या डीप डीप चैनल राइट सो सी नाउ हर्ड इम्यूनिटी इज essential to deal with a this kind of an epidemic pandemic uh, uh, situation in the sense that what your what herd immunity means the entire population becomes immune how will the entire population become immune when they all develop the infection how will they develop the infection when they spread amongst each other so we all know about r not so r not is the value that uh, the, the infectiousness of a virus so if i have a virus how many people will i be spreading it to so uh, sars cov2 ka r not is around 2.4 or thereabouts so one person will spread it to two and a half two and a half will spread it to another two and a half each so this is how it becomes exponential and uh, and this spreads infection but this also helps develop herd immunity now uh, the lockdown the, the, there were two uh, strategies to deal with uh covid 19 when it started you remember there were countries like england who initially decided that we are not going to do lockdown we are not going to lock people inside the house instead we will tell all 65 and above you stay at home everybody else come out and mix because whoever has the infection will give it to the others and eventually we will all develop herd immunity and that will make us immune to the virus uh so this is what the second way to develop mass immunity is a vaccine so her, the opposite of developing herd immunity is to do lockdown when you do lockdown there is no chance of developing herd immunity because then what you're doing is you're isolating people you're separating them you're saying that i don't want you to infect the other person because then that chain will go on and uh, and and we won't be able to healthcare services won't be able to cope with that uh, extent of infection that we will get so the lockdown principle and the herd immunity principle are actually in conflict but there is a reason for both of them because uh, when you get a new infection and nobody's got immunity again as we discussed what you worry about is the peak when the peak comes our healthcare services will get overwhelmed you know if you say we have 130 crores and 5% will require icu care straight away it's 65 lakh will require icu care 65 lakh k maybe half will require ventilators how many ventilators does india have total we have 
I don't know, 70,000, maybe we can push it to a lakh all over the nation. So can you imagine how overwhelmed we will get if it all comes together? So, so, so this is sort of the paradoxical thing that, yes, you want herd immunity, but the cost is too much if you do it at us, you know, as a as an instantaneous measure. So how huh, we will not do lockdown. We will let people mingle, let them develop herd immunity. But what about the people who fall really sick all at once? And then you'll get this kind of a steep curve and no amount of healthcare service nowhere in the world. We have seen it in the in America and, you know, Europe who have very good uh, healthcare infrastructure. They couldn't deal with it. And then we will be at a at a loss. So anyway, I'm going at a tangent, but just to explain that herd immunity does come at a cost. Now, if you think of a disease called polio, or, uh, you know, a disease like polio, polio ka uh, root of transmission is fecal. So when you give uh, the drops to all children, regardless, so if there are some who are missed out, you know, babies, then it'll pass in their fecal and then some spores will go and get uh, by the oral route consumed by ingested by other babies and that's how you develop the herd immunity so that is what it is basically that it's a population immunity by uh, by uh, spreading the infection amongst everyone and of course what you're relying on also are the asymptomatic carriers as in you know the asymptomatic carrier is well he doesn't know he has the infection so he'll go around infecting lots of people they're also called super spreaders so they have one is the benefit of herd immunity, but equally they infect if they infect elderly people, for example, unknowingly without knowing, then those people will suffer. So it is ultimately a balance. So I think, uh, you know, what our government has done has been very reasonable. They have extended the lockdown, prevented herd immunity, but so that so that we don't get overwhelmed by a herd immunity will only naturally develop. Okay. Uh, let I me, hope that uh, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think that was very, very useful because a lot of us keep hearing about the herd immunity, but not enough people understand what herd immunity actually is. And you know, herd immunity shouldn't be an excuse for rash behavior at any point in time or any kind of uh, complacency. It's a bad thing that if you have herd immunity, you wait. Kar rahe. एक जरूरी सवाल जो हमारे पास नया आया है जो रोजमर्रा की जिंदगी से आ, आ, पूछ रहे हैं सुमिता बंदोपाध्याय वो पूछ रही है वेजिटेबल फ्रूट्स में भी क्या वायरस घर आ सकता है कैन द वायरस आल्सो कम थ्रू वेजिटेबल्स एंड फ्रूट्स लिंक्ड टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज आल्सो अ क्वेश्चन दैट पीपल हैव ऑफन बीन सेइंग अबाउट ईटिंग मीट एंड नॉन वेज ड्यूरिंग दिस टाइम राइट बिकॉज़ अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल से अरे एनिमल्स तो ये घर पे लाएंगे तो हो सकता है तो आवर फूड इज व्हाट वी नीड फॉर आवर इम्यूनिटी एट दिस टाइम एंड how do we is this true is this a fact is this a myth and how do we address this? yeah yeah no absolutely so i'll answer this question first so see fruits and vegetables again jaise bazaar se aap kuch bhi laenge there's a risk that you know you don't know who has handled it who has coughed on it if there are droplets if there is anything like that so the guidance for you know receiving parcels and all from amazon was that when it comes 3 4 days just leave it you know don't touch it just leave the box there the virus lasts on that a box on cardboard box for a day virus lasts on uh, plastics and wood and other surfaces for anything between 3 to 5 days virus lasts on um, well metal like copper for few hours so you know things like that are known now in fruits and vegetables also it has a similar kind of a thing like clothes we discussed just now so even fruits and vegetables when you get it whoever is selling the fruit or vegetables you just don't know if the person has coughed on it somebody else has or his hands were not clean when he handled it so i think that's a very valid point and i think it is uh, vital to thoroughly clean the fruits and vegetables again you'll find a lot of information you know people do various things people have started putting their fruits and vegetables in a dishwasher and having it rinsed completely and it's whatever works for you you can soak it in you can uh, you know soak it in some lukewarm water but you have to scrub the surface of the fruits and vegetables very thoroughly so it's no longer just a uh, you know superficial wash under the tap but it has to be either soaked for some time or held under running water for a couple of minutes while you're thoroughly scrubbing it and ensure that the dirt or the dust or the droplets have been cleansed out and that's probably the best one can do uh, the, in response to the second question that uh, chapel asked about vegetarian non vegetarian well see there is definitely no evidence that non vegetarians are at greater risk because of taking non vegetarian food so the precautions have to be followed 
you have to make sure you get fresh because now i think it's logistic issues you know supply issues things like that yeah. you don't know are you getting fresh meat are you actually mm -hmm. getting uh, you know those are the things which should bother you but if you yeah. if you're uh, assured that you're getting it from a good place you're getting fresh meat cook it clean it thoroughly cook it thoroughly and if you've done that then there is no reason uh, why the meat the meat is not a carrier of the virus you know in the same way anything you get from outside needs thorough cleaning thorough cooking same thing goes for the you know for the vegetables also when you cook it make sure you cook it well and the heat will not let it survive fruits obviously we don't tend to cook it we tend therefore we have to be more uh, uh, particular about cleaning it very thoroughly but uh, yes i think vegetarians non vegetarians everybody is at equal risk uh, as such uh, 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 a related question to this is uh, being asked uh, by uh, Shifleto, I'm sorry if I'm, uh, I'm, I'm mispronouncing your name. Uh, I, I don't know where he is from, but he is asking a very irrelevant question again. A lot of people have been thinking about this because there's a lot of talk about vitamin three, D3 and zinc supplementation all across the world. Have look at vitamin D3, G, supplement, zinc supplementation, TG. So he's asking, should we be thinking about supplementation and booster, immunity booster injections? Uh, is that necessary and if so what yeah, should be absolutely so very relevant question and i think there's a lot of emphasis on d3 vitamin d3 because there have been studies that have shown that the uh, the cohort which has low vitamin d3 levels have fared worse in covid they have been more sick now this is because vitamin d3 actually is a very important key component of our immunity of our immune system and uh, and this is not just to do with covid we have found in tuberculosis in other respiratory illnesses that low vitamin d3 makes you more susceptible because of the fact that your immunity is compromised so vitamin d3 has been uh, uh, found to be a definite factor for uh, worsening more severe illness in covid and i think it is important that all of us because of our lifestyle being completely cooped up inside the house or inside our office or inside cars so we really expose ourselves to sunshine and sunshine is what will boost your it converts your uh, the existing vitamin d to active vitamin d and makes it a uh, active component in your body so uh, because of because of not getting exposed to sunshine we all of us all of us are i think double the, you know in the teens vitamin d most of us so uh, i think vitamin d supplementation i think it's important however to check your levels and if low definitely supplement it because it is also known that a lot of people just take it willy-nilly and then you can also go into hypervitaminosis that's also not recommended so i think definitely check it and if low you must supplement it and that will boost your immunity other see immunity is an important thing and we know that uh, vitamin c for example vitamin c is a very key immune uh, booster and a lot of people are you know taking a lot of amla and things like that which boost citrus fruits and limsi tablets and i think that's fine i think that's fine if that boosts you know that's a boost to your immunity it's well worth taking and definitely none of these will hurt zinc supplementation is also something that has been recommended again i don't think we have clear cut evidence for zinc yet i think it is part of as a supplement it's being added to the trials that are going on and uh, we may find that yes it's a good thing and uh, should be taken so uh, so i think as far as supplements are concerned i think it's all good because they all boost immunity and that's what we are relying on to help us fight the virus so i think uh, it's very reasonable to supplement your diet with uh, all of these yeah yeah and i think that's really critical because even if you don't have uh, uh, some of the immunity uh, boosters i think it's also important to think about how you can eat well exercise and also keep your mental health in a state that it doesn't compromise apni mansik aur sharirik swasthya ko aap kaise theek rakh sakte hain ye bahut zaruri hai uh we've got another question ye bombay se hai bombay uh, mumbai se vinit sharma uh, thank you vinit he is asking a very interesting question he's saying many people suffer from sinusitis are these people at similar risk like that of tb uh what are the exact symptoms of covid 19 that are different on different websites and this has been coming up again and again because as you as you have mentioned earlier once to me it's an infodemic as the who says log itni baatein karte hain ki sach kya hai pata nahi hum bhool jate hain to this has question of course has two parts uh, one related to sinusitis and one to uh, exact symptoms so ha uh, agar aap iske bare mein kuch pata Sure. Right. Uh, right, Vinny. Uh, good questions again. Now, see, sinusitis is a allergic problem. Okay, so we it is not as uh, as serious an illness 
like TB, although it can be chronic. Yes, it can be chronic because it's, uh, you know, you're inherently allergic and therefore season change and things like that will cause it. So, but I don't think it puts you at any increased risk. Whereas uh, a TB patient, if he has, so again, a cured, recovered TB patient who's young, healthy, good immunity, I think he's okay. But if you have developed TB because of having some underlying immune compromise or your lung has been damaged, then you are at higher risk. So sinusitis, I would say, I don't think you need to worry. Okay, so that's, I think, all of us have a bit of allergy, a bit of this, that. So not everybody will be at risk. Asthma is different, though, because asthma is in the lungs. And as we know, this virus, it goes into a, it goes and attaches to a receptor called ACE2, which is pre present in the lung, in alveolar epithelial cells. So that's why uh, any underlying lung disease does make you at greater risk because your you know, lungs are already a bit compromised and the virus is attacking the lungs. Uh, upper respiratory tract, yes, but not to this extent. The exact symptoms of COVID, now that is, I agree with you, it's a very important thing because there's just so much of, um, you know, uh, again, so, so much fuzziness around it. You know, everywhere you read, somebody says this, somebody says that. Now, any viral infection ka hallmark is fever. So it is important, very important. Not everybody, yeah, there'll be the odd one who doesn't have it, but fever is vital. And then cough. Yeah, so these are the two key things. Breathlessness can be part of it, but if you are breathless, that means you have a greater severity of illness. So the disease, as you know, the COVID-19 is divided into mild, moderate, severe, very severe. Mild are the ones who have fever, cough, and then you, you have the other uh, aspects of viral illness, like you have fatigue, you have myalgia, which means body ache, and you're just feeling exhausted. Yeah, so these are the key things. Upper respiratory tract, like a sore throat and cold, can be there. But somehow it's not as common as in the other viral illnesses, like the flus and all that. It's just not as common. That's what we have seen. Uh, but doesn't you know rule it out. It can still very much be there. So fever, cough, body ache, myalgia, fatigue. These are probably the key things. And uh, this defines mild, possibly moderate. But you may start developing a bit of breathlessness. If you develop breathlessness, that means you may be developing a degree of you know pneumonia, a degree of the ground glass uh, in your lungs that we see in CT scans, etc. And that's probably the time to up your treatment a little bit. You may require oxygen. You definitely need to go and see a doctor and possibly get admitted. In, in between moderate and severe, your oxygen requirement gets higher. So, for example, in moderate, you'll need three, four liters, and in severe, you'll need 10 liters, which is very high. And by the time it's very severe, then you may need to be considered for ventilator support. So, there's just increasing degree of respiratory support. So, for basic symptoms, as I said, these are the ones. What about gastro symptoms, GI symptoms, nausea, a bit of diarrhea, vomiting? can be present. Again, not widely reported, but there have been reports. So if a person has fever, cough, and a bit of that, then yes, it can all fit into this. But again, fever, cough, breathlessness, myalgia, fatigue. These are the key things. And breathlessness comes usually later on in the more you know moderate to severe group. Now, while we are at it, I'll just di discuss a couple of things, which is, well, slightly technical. But again, it's important to know because Again, you all have been reading, I'm sure, that this doesn't behave like a standard pneumonia ARDS. Now, what does that mean? So uh, for the most of the viral illnesses, viral pneumonias that we see, they are in both lungs. They are not like a solid bacterial pneumonia where your lung goes, goes completely, um, you know, uh, solid or white in that part. But it's more gray, more, you know, uh, extensive inflammation. And, uh, and, and the ARDS is also very different. ARDS is acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is a very severe condition wherein most people would end up requiring ventilatory support. Here it has been that the lung has been divided. Uh, the COVID involvement of the lung has been divided into two types by uh, by uh, some very well-known Italian investigators. So one is the L type and one is the H type. In simple words, light and heavy, but there are more technical terms. And the heavy is what behaves like a standard ARDS. Where your lung is stiff and heavy and the ventilators, you know, struggling to push in air, oxygen, etc. through it. The light behaves differently. The light is uh, not that stiff, but you're still very compromised with your oxygen. And the light may evolve to a heavy lung. But it has been seen that in the low oxygen level, which is not really like ARDS, there is a lot of, uh, lot of microthrombi, which means your lungs get little clots in it. And therefore, the blood flow is not so good. Therefore, the oxygen exchange is not so good. So they have seen a lot of the, there have been uh, reports of, you know, uh, pulmonary embolism, a lot of, you know, thrombotic. So your blood is thick. And this is all part of this very severe inflammatory response to the viral infection. That, that affect your lungs in a, so it's a spectrum of disease. It's not a single disease. 
in the lungs. And therefore, your strategy to treat, depending on what uh, way the lung is behaving, also has to differ. Therefore, you may have read accounts that ventilator is not the solution and this, that. Well, it depends. It depends on what that particular patient is behaving in what way he's behaving but yes we have to be very watchful and patients who are hospitalized first they're on the floors but you have to monitor closely that the oxygen requirement doesn't increase and then you have to move them quickly to icus and you know do the needful so it, it is something that we have to be very mindful of i hope that answers your question about the common symptoms no no i, I think these are the these are very very useful insights because uh, not enough people understand the symptoms and I think it's important to understand the fundamental symptoms or signs of a virus because uh, people start also imagining, become anxious with even other kinds of symptoms which are not relevant. So for instance, gastric symptoms which have not been widely reported but can lead to panic, can lead to uh, other kinds of confusion. Uh, I think this goes back to a comment that you made about Amazon boxes and deliveries, but not in any way related only to Amazon, but to all deliveries. He's asking, can sunlight kill the virus? And can leaving products bought from Amazon or other places or you know, in sunlight for a few hours kill the virus? And this, of course, leads to, is also linked to the earlier theory that was propounded. Like, look, if it comes to the virus will die. And you don't have to do it. Can this actually happen? I think it's very important for people to know this because this yeah. is really a myth and uh, yeah. we need to debunk it. Absolutely, absolutely. So see, the, the, the point is that on a cardboard box, the virus can stay, uh, you know, viable, means capable of causing infection for one day. That's what's been found for one day. So if you leave it untouched, the virus will die. Now remember the virus can't live by itself. By itself, it's just a piece of RNA, right? It has to enter you. It has to in enter a living being, a living, uh, so in this case, human beings. It has to enter into our cells. And once it enters into our cells, it gets into action. Then it starts, you know, it takes over your DNA machinery and starts replicating itself. Left on a cardboard box, which is non-living, the virus has no chance. Till you go touch it, touch the surface and then touch your face, inhale it, and then it can start its cycle. But left alone on the cardboard box, it will die eventually. And that's the same thing with all surfaces. Yeah, maybe the other surfaces take a bit, it stays viable for a bit longer, three to five days, wood and other things, you know, the doorknobs, door handles, things like that. So it does. But on cardboard, it's one day. So regardless of the sun, if you just leave it by itself, it will die because it just doesn't have any, you know, a living being to get into and start multiplying. So I think it's important that you have ordered, do not touch it. Do not touch it for at least a day, maybe to be on the safe side too, and then only go and, um, uh, you know, open up the box. Sunshine, well, as, as uh, Chappell also rightly pointed out, uh, it, it may uh, speed up the process, but it, it's not necessary. The virus will die anyway, you know, uh, if, if left to itself and not... Uh, Taken into the system. I mean, uh, one important question that has come up to Bahut Zaruri hai our next question. Kishore Prakash uh, I noticed that there are a number of homeopathic medicines being sold under the tag that they prevent corona. What is your opinion on this? I want to add a related question to this. homeopathy ko to leke jo baat kar rahe corona ke baare mein. Magar usse bhi badi baat hai ki aapko bahut sare Cures बताए जा रहे हैं अश्वगंधा ये शिल ये जीप ये हर्ब खाली जे अब I am sure they are all uh, uh, good and immunity inducing मगर इनमें इन सब में कितनी सच्चाई है कि अगर हम लोगों को बोलें कि गार्लिक खाते जाइए या ये तेल पी लीजिए या ये दवा खरीद लीजिए इस आयुर्वेदिक स्टोर से तो होम्योपैथी आयुर्वेदा ये कहाँ पर स्टैंड करते हैं इस वक्त इस इस uh, crisis. Yeah, a very again very important question uh, for us to you know understand and so the the difference between uh, allopathic medicine and the others you know the traditional medicine is that allopathic medicine only comes into the market after quite rigorous scientific clinical studies. Right. So the drug goes to what the vaccine is now going through phase zero one two three. 
and then it gets approval and then phase four may it is out for circulation and while it is being tested you're looking for safety is the medicine safe is it effective is it doing what we want it to do and only when we are convinced about this in large groups then only it is introduced in the market so when a medicine when i prescribe a medicine i'm prescribing it with the full confidence that yes it has been tested it is safe for my patient now the other uh, branches unfortunately are not don't have this extent of scientific you know rigor so my now obviously i can't comment on a lot of it because you know i don't practice these uh, uh, these uh, streams these uh, medicine uh, lines of medicine now one or two things however to point out is that ayurveda which is a traditional very old you know allopathic is very new compared to that that is something that is traditionally in india for uh, thousands of years and i think we have to um, also bear that in mind that ayurveda whatever is recommended is usually natural products you know it's herbs it's uh, seeds it's things that we use in day to day life yeah they may say if somebody says a bit of turmeric will help your immunity uh, taking amla will help your immunity i would say yeah absolutely go for it you know because it will it will boost your immunity will it kill the virus no the virus doesn't have a a, a tablet to kill it yet and unless we so yes immune boosting is one thing killing the virus is another thing so and and homeopathic medicines again uh, is something it's difficult because you know it has a mix of little little things and you really don't know what it is and i know the doses are very tiny i know that arsenic has been recommended for example and at a very you know small dose but it's very difficult for me to uh, have any sort of conviction in uh, using these i would say to kill the virus we need to wait for the clinical trials that are going on to boost your immunity what is recommended in ayurveda in our things by all means use it but things that are very dubious sounding like you know uh, gaumutra and all these kind of things which are floating about i would say uh, please use your common sense you know that is there is no evidence it works i mean what are we grounding it on and then you get some other illness because of that so you know just be sensible about the approach you take homeopathic and all again that is the direct question i i would say there is no no evidence for it so not none of these will kill your virus the virus will do its time most viral illnesses we know don't have a cure they come into your body your immune system gets activated and fight it then the virus is you know then the, you you recover from it yes some hiv has treatment uh, h1n1 swine flu has treatment and so these have been developed after so much you know research so to then say that yes this that and the other can treat coronavirus i think is a complete sham and i don't think we should fall for it this is uh, this is really important ye bahut zaruri baat hai aap ye yaad rakhiye ki uh, ayurveda is good and i think uh, like dr datta was saying a lot of the things that are recommended are natural they are helpful but there is no cure for the virus right now no scientific cure so it to go around Uh, believing in any system of medicine, and you know, allopathy is openly admitting that it doesn't have a cure. is is very important that you do not. You want to boost your immunity, do it sensibly with sensible suggestion, um, and and look at it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, make your choices based on some intelligent analysis. आप सोच के करें जो भी ले रहे हैं ऐसे ही कोई आपको बोलता है कि इसका क्योर है इसका क्योर नहीं है हमारे पास आयुर्वेदा में इसका क्योर है किसी किसी भी प्रणाली में इसका क्यों है तो थोड़ा सोच के उसको फॉलो करें लास्ट क्वेश्चन जो मैं आपसे लेना चाहूंगा वो ये है कि अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल बिलीव दैट दिस इज ओनली अ लार्जली अर्बन फिनोमिन दैट द कोरोना वायरस इज अ फेयर दैट एग्जिस्ट्स इन अर्बन एरियाज अलोन एंड लिंक टू दिस इज द फैक्ट दैट वी आर सीइंग द हाईएस्ट केस सर्च इन डेंसली पॉपुलेटेड बिग सिटीज Why we are testing extensively. तो कुछ लोगों को ये लगता है कि ये ज्यादातर शहरों में और खासकर बड़े शहरों में इसको देखा जा रहा है और इसलिए वहीं पर है तो जो छोटे शहर हैं या छोटे प्रांत हैं उसमें जिंदगी ऐसी ही चलती रहनी चाहिए जैसी है और उससे जुड़ा हुआ ये सवाल भी है कि लोग ये मानते हैं कि छोटे शहरों में जैसे लॉकडाउन हम फिजिकल डिस्टेंसिंग की बात करते हैं इसकी इतनी जरूरत नहीं तो क्या ये सच है सो यस इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन फॉर अस सी द वायरस स्टार्टेड एज अ व्हाट इज कॉल्ड अ वाइट कॉलर डिजीज यानी 
जो लोग यू नो यूरोप में अमेरिका में थे दे ब्रॉट इट बैक टू इंडिया विद विद देम या जो वुहान में थे कुछ लोग सो यू नो दैट काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग ठीक है इट केम टू इंडिया फ्रॉम आउटसाइड बट दैट्स व्हाट हैपेंस जब स्पैनिश फ्लू भी आया था तब सेलर्स लेके आए थे शिप्स में और अभी नाउ वी हैव एरोप्लेन्स सो एरोप्लेन्स में इट केम टू इंडिया सो बिकॉज दीज पीपल ब्रॉट इट फ्रॉम अब्रॉड एंड दीज पीपल पॉसिबली स्टे इन सिटीज सो सिटीज में शुरुआत हुआ एंड येस एब्सोल्यूटली राइट सिटीज एकदम कंजेस्टेड है तो वहां तो फैलना ही है you know so th- there is no option jahan uh, bhi as we discussed uh, in the early part jahan bhi log ikattha honge bheed honge wahan virus failega without a doubt but again equally i told you about the sabzi mandi sabzi mandi to shaharon mein nahi hota hai that happens in uh, remote slightly out of the uh, city area city zones mein hota hai and wahan bhi people are at equal risk so you know in the uh, smaller cities All you need is one person. हाँ शुरू में अब it's uh, Delhi, Bombay, Ahmedabad. You know the big cities. Big cities are taking the brunt of it. But remember that India में other than जिनको already हो चुका है COVID किसी को immunity नहीं है. So every single one of us is susceptible. मतलब हम हर एक को होगा. You know कोई option नहीं है. Virus जब एक population में घुसता है, वो सब पूरा population को infect करके उसके बाद ही जाके stop hota hai transmission as we saw in wuhan right so wuhan mein they sealed it off completely wuhan mein 82000 or something like that got infected when did the virus stop transmitting jab koi bacha hi nahi just who is uh, susceptible susceptible means just uh, just population ko kabhi ye viral infection hua nahi hai and right now when the uh, uh, covid started the whole globe it had the whole globe's population pura duniya ka population tha jo susceptible hai. so it started its work country by country country by country and as you have seen this is the trajectory har ek country ko isi trajectory pe jana hai koi solution nahi hai iska all we can do is lockdown se isko thoda slow down kar sakte hai nothing else aap dekhoge graph dekhoge lockdown nahi hota to aise peak hota lockdown hone ke wajah se aise ho gaya hai the area under the graph the area under that curve is the same right so all we have done is we've slowed it down aisa nahi hai ki bas shaharon mein hoke mar jayega nahi it won't happen because ek bar lockdown khul gaya kitna aajkal human movement hai hum log ek jagah se dusri jagah shahar cities villages towns sab ghumte rehte hain so all you need is one person to enter one village and that's it so i believe that in matlab jo remote areas mein villages mein bataya gaya hai mujhe ki log vigil night vigil rakhte hain yani ek unka roster hota hai ki aaj ye family jo entrance hai village ka wahan pe chaukidari karenge ki koi naya koi ghuse na which is excellent which is excellent and that may be a very good way to prevent you know this kind of because uh, uh, villages uh, in pandemics can get wiped out one person comes with a infection and the village is uh, you know t- totally not susceptible thus you know so that kind of thing has happened in the past that's why we know that it will happen so there is no chance that the cities will get hit and that's it finished because right now we are heading towards the lockdown ending right already there has been relaxation and this will continue to happen because the economic uh, crisis is deepening too much otherwise so it is inevitable that lockdown dheere dheere hatega travel will increase and the virus will spread more we don't have a choice in this only thing we can do is that we take the precautions we hope that yes most of us will get a low grade infection and get better and get immune as well but other than that there is no so i think all of us uh, so, so don't have any misconceptions ki hum gaon mein hai yahan nahi aayega ya hum chote shehar mein hai yahan nahi aayega ultimately the virus will go everywhere ठीक है एंड देन अनलेस आई मीन वी वर होपिंग कि हाँ गर्मी आ जाएगी तो हम बच जाएंगे या हमारा बीसीजी वैक्सीनेशन है वो किसी तरह हमें बचाव देगा बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली दैट इज नॉट द केस यू नो ऑलरेडी वी वर येस्टरडे का काउंट था 62,000 एंड इट्स ओनली गोइंग अप सो आई थिंक इट इज इन एवेटेबल सो सबको तैयार रहना चाहिए कि होगा विदाउट पैनिकिंग विदाउट पैनिकिंग सो आई थिंक दिस इज अ रियली गुड नोट टू एक्चुअली फ्लूस ऑन कि डू नॉट पैनिक there is the possibility that the virus will come to where you live uh, you must know the symptoms aap symptoms ko samajhiye aap usko kaise handle karna hai usko samajhiye kisi uh, uh, unverified ya unsubstantiated theory ya dawai leke apne aap ko kisi risk mein mat daliye uh, jo precautions aaj humne discuss kiye hain wo dhyan mein rakhiye aur khas kar jo myths jo misinformation hai इस वायरस के आसपास उसको प्लीज 
ध्यान में रखिए कि उनको आप बेकार में बिलीव करके ना तो किसी आ, ना तो अपने आप को रिस्क में डालें ना किसी और को रिस्क में डालें बिकॉज ये बहुत जरूरी है इसके अंदर जो शायद आ, आ, मेडिसिन में एक बहुत सबसे पुरानी कहावत है प्रिवेंशन इज बेटर देन क्योर इज रियली बींग इलास्ट्रेटेड इन फ्रंट ऑफ आस इन दिन द इन द मोस्ट अलाइव वे पॉसिबल यू नो इन द मोस्ट ग्राफिक वे पॉसिबल कि बस बचाव ही इसका इलाज है तो ये बहुत ज़रूरी है कि आप इस बात को समझें और इसको अमल में लाएं बिकॉज अब जब लॉकडाउन खुल रहा है तो ये मिथ्स और ये फैक्ट्स के साथ आपको डील करके अपने आप को और अपने परिवार को और अपने समुदाय को तैयार करना है इससे लड़ने के लिए सो लेट मी एंड बाय थैंक यू बर्नाली बर्नाली थैंक यू सो मच आई नो यू एक्सट्रीमली बिजी आप बहुत बिजी हैं uh, तो आपने ये वक्त निकाला और बहुत अच्छे से हम सबको समझाया कि इसमें क्या चीज़ सही है और क्या नहीं है इससे हमें और हमारे दर्शकों को बहुत बहुत फायदा होगा थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच एंड एंड लेट मी आल्सो एंड बाय सेइंग कि स्क्रोल हैज बीन डूइंग इनक्रेडिबल वर्क ऑन कोविड नाइनटीन आई है यू मस्ट चेक आउट दी इंग्लिश आर्टिकल्स इन स्क्रोल बट यू शुड ऑल्सो चेक आउट दी हिंदी कवरेज ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन एंड सत्याग्रह ये दोनों रिलायबल हैं और इनसे इनकी इंफॉर्मेशन जरूर पढ़िए ताकि आप आ, अपने आप को ठीक से समझ सकें और आपके अगर और सवाल हैं तो हमें ज़रूर भेजिएगा हम जिस तरह भी हो सके उनका समाधान करने की कोशिश करेंगे आखिर में मैं एक संस्था से जुड़ा हुआ हूँ सर्वाइवर्स अगेंस्ट टी वी यहाँ पर टी पेशेंट्स की हम मदद करते हैं तो अगर आप एक टी पेशेंट हैं जिनकी किसी तरह की ज़रूरत है इस कोविड 19 क्राइसिस में तो आप हमें लिखिए फेसबुक ट्विटर जहाँ पर भी आप हमें ढूंढ सकते हैं लिखिए हमने व्हाट्सएप नंबर भी डाला हुआ है अपने वेबसाइट पे ताकि आपको आसानी फेसबुक पे ताकि आपको आसानी से मदद मिल सके सो थैंक यू सो मच ऑल फॉर जॉइनिंग थैंक यू बर्नाली फॉर बीइंग विद अस टुडे फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम हम बीस मिनट ऊपर चले गए अपने टाइम से मगर सवाल थे तो इसलिए हमें पूछना जरूरी था वी हैव टू आस्क यू थैंक यू एंड थैंक यू स्कूल फॉर होस्टिंग दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन थैंक यू